I'm the blue cat and the red cat is someone somewhere in the world. We're doing multiplayer gaming today in the Chromark Studio. Stay tuned for that. <laughs> Chromark Studio in beautiful Ottawa, Canada. I'm Andrew Tomek, your technology teacher, back with another great Scratch lesson for you today. So I've been really interested for a long time in uh, multiplayer gaming. It's Networking is one of the most complicated aspects of coding that I've encountered. And um, Scratch has kind of built in a fairly simple system that makes uh, networking and multiplayer coding kind of work, kind of, sort of. And that's cloud variables. Now, cloud variables don't work with um, beginner Scratch users who have that functionality denied to them. So you're just, until you become an official Scratcher, which usually happens after you've contributed a few posts and done and maybe uh, made a few projects, they're, um, the Scratch team is basically looking for people who uh, who have enough commitment to Scratch that they have done a few projects and participated in the community a little bit. At some point, you get an email saying you are now officially a Scratcher. And at that point, you get some a few extra privileges, the most important one of which is that you have access to these cloud variables. What's the cloud variable? That's just a variable that can be read off of a cloud server. So it's an, uh, if you have a variable like score, for example, normally it resides on your computer. And if you get a high score on your computer, someone playing the same project somewhere else is looking at their own local variable on their computer and they won't see what your score is. But a cloud variable just basically saves that score to a big hard drive somewhere on a server, somewhere at MIT probably. And um, then other computers can read that. And so everyone is looking at the same variable at once. So the key to getting a multiplayer game going, of course, then is um, just sending the vari variables about where your character is off to the cloud so that somebody else can, uh, can interpret that information, grab it off of the server, and then find out where you are, basically. So your x-coordinate, when you move your character, turns into a cloud variable that another computer can read. And when that x variable changes, it knows to move the opposing player's piece across the uh, game screen, basically. So that's the essence of it. It's a little trickier, though, because both of you are running the same version of the project. So how, when you click the green flag, how does the game know whether you're player one or player two, since you both have identical versions of the code? I'm gonna walk you through this today and kind of explain to you how this works. And it's actually a very clever system. Uh, I'm taking code from a, a scratcher and tutorial maker named Color, uh, sorry, Colorless Wing Studio. And so I wanna give him a shout out, or him or her a um, shout out for making this original project. This is largely a copy of what this other scratcher has done. But um, there's even a tutorial on this system on YouTube made by this same um, scratcher. But what I'm gonna do today is kind of explain in a little bit more detail. So the other one is just do this, do that, do that. And I'm gonna give you a tutorial today that gives you a little bit more detail about why we're setting various variables and how it all works. So that's what we're getting into. And um, let's get started on that right now. So we don't need a starter file for this project. We're actually just going to start with a blank bit of code here. So um, we're going to start with three sprites. I'm going to make a cat my first sprite. We're going to do the same thing that Colorless Wing did here. I'm going to get a second cat and maybe change him to a different color. So let's grab a second scratch cat and we'll make him red maybe. Whoops. So we're just going to color him a shade of red so that he looks a little different from his pals. And then we're going to go over to the other cat here and we'll paint him a bluish color. Now I'm not changing costumes in this particular tutorial, though of course if you were you'd want to have both costumes uh, a different color. So here we got Sprite 1, we're, we'll call him 
player one, and we've got sprite two, we'll call player two. Okay, now I'm going to set up a third, third sprite here that will be the controller sprite. And we're just going to um, grab a stock scratch character. I think Giga was the one who the original um, designer of this tutorial used, so let's grab the, him. And so most of the, um, of the multiplayer code happens inside of this third character who's just there at the beginning of the game to get everything set up and then he'll disappear and uh, then your two players can play. We're not gonna have a functioning game here at the end of this tutorial. All we're really trying to do is get it so that um, the two characters are moving around and one of us is controlling one and the other one is controlling the other. Once you have that established, then you've got the basis of some kind of a game that you can play, a co-op game or um, or a PvP game of some kind. And um, I'm going to leave it up to you guys to figure out what to do with this. I'll probably be working with this engine in future weeks and doing some other fun stuff with it as well. But uh, for now, our main focus today is just getting you to be able to see what your opponent posing character is doing and vice versa. So we're doing most of that coding inside Giga, as I said. Let's get started with him. So we're going to just do a green flag here under events. And we're, there's a bit of a pause here at the beginning. So we're just going to put a, the word loading up here. And so the pause is here so that both players can spend some time figuring out um, whether they're connected to the cloud server. Where, now, the, this software isn't very sophisticated, so only two people are going to be able to be on your game at any given time. If a third person tries to get in, they're just going to be booted and told there's no space on the server. There's more complicated ways to do this, but I'm trying to keep things very, very simple for you guys today. So we're going to say loading here, and for a couple of seconds, while these two guys negotiate and see who which is player one and, and player two, um, we're going to uh, tell our guys to go to the middle of the screen. That's where just, we're going to get them to start from there. We'll tell them to show as well. Now, we need a couple of variables here. So let's go ahead and set up some initial variables. We're going to make a variable called player1 and another one called player2. And another one called player two. And we're going to create some cloud variables too. So let's create a variable called player one check. And that's going to be a cloud variable. So we're going to click on this little button here and we'll call it player one check. And as I said, we'll do another one here, make a variable called player two check. Now these variables aren't going to be working in the game. They're just here for this negotiation process I was talking about where we're trying to figure out who's the first player and who's the second player in the game. So um, at the beginning here, we're going to set play the variable called player1 to whatever the player1 check number is. Now this number is going to change as time goes on. And so basically we're freezing this variable player one check at the moment that we're checking it. And so what's going to happen is uh, when player uh, later on, we're going to check and see whether our player one variable is the same as the one that's stored on the server. And the idea is if it is the same, then it'll know that we're going to be player one. If it's not, if somebody else has joined the game afterwards and is trying to get in, their player one check variable won't be the same as their player one variable. And that is um, how the computer is going to know that you were the not the one who's going to be player one. It sounds a little confusing, but it'll make a bit more sense as we go on here. So we're going to do the same thing for player two here. We'll go set player two check to player two. Oh, sorry. We're going to set play the player two variable to player two check. There we go. Now we need to wait a couple of seconds. So let's put a wait five seconds in here. And that's where this loading screen is going to figure out um, which player is actually the one that is player one and player two. And that gives um, 
us a second to get in here and to update that cloud variable and get the information down. And we're going to be comparing those numbers. So um, uh, some of this is happening inside the other characters too, and I'll show you that in a couple of minutes. So let's go create an if else statement here. And the if else statement is going to work this way. Um, if that player one check number is equal to our player. So let's grab an equal sign. Variables. So if player one check is equal to player. So it should be equal in a perfect world. It should be equal because we just set it here to player one check, right? So these two numbers should be equal. But after five seconds, if somebody else has logged in and uh, before you and started running, what's going to happen is their player one character is going to start changing this variable and messing with it. So in that five seconds, that number is going to change. And now suddenly this if statement won't be true anymore. So um, basically, we're just it's just a first come, first serve uh uh, kind of scenario here. So um, if you're the first one to log in, your player one will match that player one check variable. If not, your SOL. Okay, so let's go uh, player one check equals player one. And if that's true, then we're going to tell ourselves that we're player one. We're going to set the variable player ID. So let's make a new variable, sorry. So that player ID is going to tell us whether we're player one or player two. So let's make a new variable. We'll call it player ID. And so if player check does equal one, and that means we grab that slot, we're going to set player one, uh, sorry, player ID to one and that'll tell us that we are now player one and we'll be able to read that over in the player one character and it'll respond to our commands. Okay, um, now we're gonna start messing with the other players. Now that we've grabbed that player one, we want that number to be different for the next person who tries to grab it away from us. So we're gonna, so now that we're in here, we have we can change that player one check variable back to zero, and then we're gonna start manipulating it over in our player one sprite to make sure that nobody has that same number. Okay, so we wanna let our player know that he is player one. So we're just gonna grab a say bubble here and say, you are the blue cat. Let's put an exclamation mark there just for fun. All right, we're gonna broadcast two messages now and I'll show you what those do in a second. The first one is called a join. That will get us into the game and get us uh, moving around. Um, but we need to know which player we are. So we're also gonna broadcast a message here that says player one, that will tell player one to start listening to our commands and not our opposing player's command. Okay. After that, we're done with Giga, so we'll just tell him to hide. He's done his job here and figured out, refereed this little match to see who's going to be player one and play, who's going to be player two. All right, so if our player one check doesn't match player one, which means someone else has grabbed player one, you still get a chance to go into the game, of course. we can. We uh, Our last opportunity here is we can see if that player two slot is open. So we're going to do another if statement here, and it's going to basically look the same as the other one. So I'm going to just duplicate the contents of this player one. Uh, yeah, we're just going to duplicate all of these contents here. So I'm going to inside the um, inside the else statement, I'm going to put another if else statement. I'm actually just going to copy this entire if else statement. I'm going to duplicate it and put it inside this else statement. So let's just change all these IDs and things over to player two. We'll go player two check is equal to player two. We'll set player ID to two. And we'll change the player one check to player two check. And we'll say you are red cat. And then we can still broadcast that join message. And then we'll broadcast a new message here. This is player two. 
and then we can hide Giga again. Now, if we fail again, if we don't grab that player two slot, as I said, we are out of luck. And because of the very simple gaming system, we haven't created multiple slots. I'd love to see if you guys can figure out how to do that. But for now, we're going to say, too bad. The game is full. So in this case, you're just going to have to wait for that slot to become available. Um, I don't imagine too many people are going to be playing this game for too long because there's just not a whole lot happening. All right. And so if that happens, we're just going to stop the game here. So let's just do a stop all. And that will just um, stop the pain for us because we just don't get to play this game because we haven't coded multiple slots. Okay. So that is all we have to do in our controller. So we basically pick player one and player two. Well, we still have to code the little section here where it's telling us uh, where we're sabotaging things for the other player. We have to start changing that player one check and player two check variable. So let's go back to our player one, our blue cat here, and we can start coding that. So we'll go when I receive a message. So there's no green flags here at all because nothing happens with your character right now. Um, now we need a few other variables to make this all happen. So let's just do a bit of uh, tidying up here. We do want to, oh, we do have one green flag, which is just to, uh, to clean up all our variables here. So let's go when green flag clicked. And here's where we're going to create um, just four variables here. Two, one for the X coordinate of your player one, one for the Y coordinate of your player one, and the same for player two, an X and a Y coordinate. So we're gonna make those cloud variables, of course. So let's go to our variables. We'll call this first one X1 cloud variable, okay. And then we'll make a new one called X2 cloud variable. And then we'll make a Y1 cloud variable. And then we'll make a Y2, which is also a cloud variable. Okay, so we don't need to be looking at all the variables here. Let's just hide them all. All right, so let's just initialize these variables. Let's put everyone to the center of the screen. We'll just go X1 is equal to zero. Whoop, I have a comment by accident there x2 is zero, whoops, y1 is zero, and y2 is zero. Okay, we've initialized our variables. We're going to tell our cat to hide at the beginning of the game. He's only going to become visible once a player has been picked. All right, so... <clears throat> So a couple of things are happening. Remember, there's two messages being sent out here. The one is called um, player one or player two, and the other one's called a join. So let's look at that join message first. When I receive a join message, all we're going to do is tell our character to forever just keep going wherever this variable is. So wherever this cloud variable says he is, that's where we're going to go. We, since we're a local player here, we could theoretically create another variable that actually tells us where we are. But we need this script to work no matter what happens. So regardless of whether we're player one or player two, um, we still need this guy to move around to wherever the coordinate is. So that's why we're, we're not even going to look at where the character is right now. We're just going to look at this variable and move him according to that. So let's grab a go to command here. So here's our go to, and we're going to tell him to go to wherever that variable tells him to go to. So we're going to go to x1, y1. There we go. And in a minute, we're going to do the same thing over on player two, but let's finish player one first. All right. So um, that's when I receive join. Now there's one other when I receive join here as well. And let's uh, pop, let's just make a duplicate of this. When I receive join, forever, we're going to do another thing here, which is the first thing we're going to do is, is show our character. So we're going to join and then show. And let's grab an if statement and pop it in here. 
and we're gonna say if our player ID equals one. So if we successfully got picked as player ID one, then we are in control of that variable called player one check and we're going to sabotage everyone else here who's trying to log into this. So we're going to put a forever inside here and we're just going to start counting up that variable. So let's go change that variable, change player one check by one and then wait one second. So every second we're going to keep changing that variable. So whoever else tries to log into here, their player check isn't going to match their player one variable and they will not they will know that they can't log into the system. So this is the sabotaging part I was talking about. And the only other thing we have to do here now is let's go grab another um, so now we need to control our player. So we're gonna go when I receive a message and the new the message here is going to be player one. So when I receive a player one message that means I've been given that slot. And we're just going to do a simple movement command here to change our x coordinates around. So we're going to say um, that we're going to grab an if statement here. And we'll go if up arrow is pressed. So we're going to go grab our sensing blocks, grab the up arrow block. Then we're going to change our cloud variable, not our y coordinate, but our y1. by, we're going to do this by three, though we can pick any number depending on what speed we want to move at. All right, let's just duplicate this. And if we're going down, down arrow, we're going to change this by minus three. And let's duplicate it again. And if I go left, we're going to change not our y variable, but our x1 variable by minus three. And if we go right, I'm sure you can guess that so we'll change our x1 by three. Beautiful. All right, so this is all the code we need for player one. And player two will basically have the identical code except player two isn't going to have to initialize their variables. Okay, I'm just gonna drag all of this code over including this one here that we don't need because I oh, I just want to grab a, a when green flag hide. So let's pop that into player one here, player two. We can connect that together again. Then I'm going to grab this block of code and this block of code and this block of code. So player two has all of these things. Let's go and make some changes for him. Grab the joins, player one. So this is when I receive player two now. I'm gonna change y2, y2 again, x2, and x2. All right, and we're gonna change the player ID to two here. And then we're gonna start changing player two check because this is the character we're gonna control if we do player two. And when I receive join, we're going to start going to x2 and y2. There we go. That, believe it or not, is all there is to it. So we can see when I click the green flag here, it's going to give us a loading screen. And because no one else is messing with that cloud variable, it's going to declare us, player one, the blue cat. And you can see that when we move our arrow keys around, we actually are moving at a speed of three. Now, how will we know whether this is actually working for the other character or not? Let's grab another computer and I'll show you what it looks like when it's connected. I'll be back in just one minute. Okay, we're back. I've got my trusty Chromeworks laptop here, which we're going to use as our second computer. And I'm already logged into, so I've shared this file and I've logged into the exact same file with both computers. And you can see, so I'm now going to move the uh, character around with my keyboard on my main desktop computer. I just change the focus here. 
And you can see that as I move left and right on the one computer, the other character with fairly good, the lag's not too bad at all, eh? Let's move up, down. You can see there's maybe a half a second difference, but we're actually keeping up pretty well here. So this could be someone on the other side of the planet. It doesn't necessarily mean you. Okay, let's try moving around this character now. So I'm gonna move Red Cat around. And you can see that he's ha he's working on both screens now too. Excellent. So there it is. That's kind of a proof of concept here, showing you guys how, the beginnings of how to do a multiplayer gaming setup. So. <laughs> So the challenge here is going to be what to do with this, right? So now that you've got two, you've got the ability to send variables back and forth. It doesn't just have to be your X or Y coordinates, of course. It could be um, a button that you pressed in a, um, a word game or something, for example, or a Scrabble game or something along those lines. Or we could do Hangman or something along those lines as well. And the idea would just be that. Um, you're just changing variables around from one player to another and you're letting you're letting one player work. So the, the real two concepts here are getting your computer to understand whether you're player one or player two, and that's what we covered in that Giga Sprite. And then once you have that figured out, just using cloud variables to control stuff where normally you would use ordinary variables. So I hope this all makes sense to you guys. I can't wait to see what you guys make with this. As usual, there's a remix room set up. So just um, go over to chromeworks.ca slash live stream. Or if uh, if you're it's been more than a week since we published this project, you'll probably find this on chromeworks.ca slash lessons. Anyway, from there, you will find a link that will take you to the remix room for this project where you can send us your multiplayer gaming projects and i'd love to showcase one of them so if you have something really cool that you want to share with our viewers just save it into that studio and from there we will be showing them on next week's or a future broadcast so can't wait to see what you guys come up with um thanks for joining me and we'll see you next time <laughs>